Good morning, my name is Jocelyn, and this year I have the great privilege of working in Dr. Lima and Dr. Hidalgo's lab studying the effects of anesthetocysteine, or NAC, on the inflammatory response of Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is the most prevalent age-related neurological disorder worldwide. Currently, Chile has the third highest rates of Alzheimer's disease in Latin America, and it's characterized by the shrinkage of the cerebral cortex and the hippocampus, as well as by the presence of tau tangles and amyloid beta plaques. Together, these physiological changes lead to the memory deficits often associated with Alzheimer's disease. Previous studies from the Lima and Hidalgo labs have implicated that abnormal calcium signaling, as well as oxidative stress, play a role in the pathology of AD. So, the neurons of rats that have been intrahippocampally intra injected with amyloid beta proteins exhibited increased reactive oxygen species generation. And this increase in reactive, ox reactive oxygen species generation not only leads to increased neuronal stress, but it also damages neurons. And one way that it damages neurons is by inducing a redox-dependent downregulation of the RYR2 protein in the hippocampus. And this is important because the RYR2 protein is a calcium channel protein. And since a lot of the major neuronal processes, such as memory retention information, are calcium dependent and depend on the calcium release that is mediated by the RYR family of calcium channels, this, these two um, processes increased neuronal oxidative stress and the downregulation of the RYR2 protein ultimately impair spatial memory. So, rats, the spatial memory of rats that were injected with the amyloid beta protein was assays using an oasis mace. And in this maze, animals are tasked with finding a food reward. And the rats that were treated with the amyloid beta protein were not only less successful at finding the food reward as controls, but also took a significantly longer time to do so. So this research, this research implies that if one can attenuate that oxidative stress that occurs in the neurons, we can hopefully protect against the um, downregulation of the RYR protein and therefore protect against the memory deficit seen in Alzheimer's disease. And one simple way to do so is by using antioxidants, specifically and acetylcysteine is of interest because it's a precursor to a protein that plays a really important role in a pathway that sequesters reactive oxygen species. So, as predicted, NAC not only prevented the increased production of reactive oxygen species in the neurons of rats that were treated with amyloid beta protein, but also protected against the downregulation of the RYR protein. And together, this attenuated the memory deficits seen in the rats that were treated with amyloid beta protein. The rats were not only as successful as controlled at finding the food reward in the OASIS test, but also did so in a time period that was comparable to controls. So given this information, um, new studies have sort of implicated that neural inflammation also plays a role in the pathology of Alzheimer's disease. However, this has much has been studied much less. So the goal of my project is to determine whether NAC attenuates the microglial inflammatory response in an AD brain because microglia are the major immune cells of the brain. So we hypothesize that yes, NAC will better suppress the microglia, will better suppress the microglial inflammatory response by protecting microglia against oxidative stress and abnormal calcium regulation. And to test this hypothesis, Rats will receive intrahippocampal injections of amyloid beta protein, and after recovering, they will be subjected to NAC feeding, or at least half of our animals will, and then the spatial memory, their spatial memory will be evaluated, and brain tissue will be harvested. The harvested brain tissue will be used and stained for markers of microbial activation, as well as, as well as proteins that sort of tell us what is going on in the microglia. Are they causing inflammation or are they preventing inflammation using two protein assays? We will also use this brain tissue to study the RYR protein expression and levels and activity and also the production of reactive oxygen species. So we expect to see that rats treated with amyloid beta proteins that are not fed 
the antioxidant, will exhibit increased microglial activation, will release increased pro-inflammatory proteins, and produce lots of reactive oxygen species. We, will also, we also expect to see that these rats have decreased levels of the RYR2 protein. And because of these, all, these physiological, physiological changes, we expect them to exhibit in the artificial period. On the other hand, we expect to see that rats that are treated with amyloid beta protein but fed this antioxidant have decreased microglial activation, show a decrease in the pro-inflammatory cytokine profile, exhibit less generation of reactive oxygen species, and an increase in the RYR2 protein levels compared to our amyloid beta-treated rats. And hopefully, we see that their spatial memory is intact. So in summary, the goal of my project is to determine whether NAF attenuates the microglial inflammatory response in an AD brain. And we hypothesize that NAF will protect microglia against oxidative stress in a normal calcium signaling in an AD brain. And we hope that the results of this study and future studies not only shed light on whether NAF exhibits these same effects in vitro, but if it does so in human patients. And I would like to thank Dr. Cecilia Dongo, Dr. Mm -hmm. Andrea Lima, and the Fulbright Foundation for not only believing in this project, but supporting it. And I would be happy to take any questions. <laughs> changes that ultimately lead to the memory impairments. So I don't know what percentage of the disease is caused by this, since there are many factors that underlie. Um, but it's very common in most pathologies of the disease. Great, yeah. 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 How is amyloid beta produced? Is it a genetic? Some of it is genetic. There okay. is this gene. It's called the ABO gene. Mm -hmm. And if you produce, you, I think everyone has some class, but if you produce a lot or a very, very severe amount. That's when you start developing the symptoms. Okay. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that Chile is the third largest in Latin America. I was yes. wondering kind of what the prevalence of um, Alzheimer's is in Chile. Do you know what so it, it's all getting a little bit worse because the population in Chile is getting older. And out of the population that's getting older, 10% of them have this oh. disease. And I think that equates to, I think, 110,000 people in this population that I've recorded or around there. But it's all projected to get much worse since China is becoming more developed and people are living longer. PhD to understand your <laughs> <laughs> project. <laughs> Thank you for explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>